Hey guys, welcome back to The Bright Side. Macy here, The Bright Side Girl, and today is going to be the start of a new reading vlog for Galaxy-a-thon. So good morning, happy Galaxy-a-thon day one. I've got my little astronaut shirt on. I am ready to go to space with all of you. So in case you have missed it, Galaxy-a-thon is my space galaxy star alien themed read-a-thon. We read books that are set in space or about space for two weeks. Today is Monday, March 11th and the start of the read-a-thon. So that is what I'm gonna be doing for this reading vlog. I also like to do activities to whatever the read-a-thon is. We consume food based on the read-a-thon. We're gonna go shopping, we're gonna do a whole bunch of different things. Per usual, today is Monday. is one of the only days that I don't work from home, so I'm getting ready to head out the door. But I wanted to pop in here and say hi. Tell you there probably won't be a lot of footage today, per usual, because I'll be at work. I am able to listen to audiobooks at work. Not picked my audio for today for the first time. I usually pick a super short novella so that I can just get one done and be kind of off on a great foot. But I actually am able to listen to quite a bit while I'm at work. So I thought maybe I would start like a slightly longer one, but I have not fully decided. I think on the way to work I'm gonna listen to a couple different audios and see what narrator I like the best. If you haven't seen my galaxy a -thon TBR I will link that down below in the description to give you an idea of some things that I might be reading. So I don't have a lot planned today but I do have some fun things planned for the rest of the week. I'll pop back in at the end of the workday let you guys know how it went, what I read, hopefully I finish something by the time I get back and I'll see you guys soon. All right I'm home it is now 8 p.m. on Monday evening. After work, I hung out with my mom and my sister. We watched Traders UK season two. You watched the Randomathon vlog. I am very into Traders right now. It's a fabulous show. I won't talk about it here because I talked about it <laughs> at length in that other vlog. It's basically like a murder mystery based reality show with games and stuff. Really fun. We're watching the UK seasons now and then I just came home and ate some dinner. So reading updates. I went with If Taught to Be Fortunate or something like that from Becky Chambers. This is is a novella from Becky Chambers. She has a lot of other spacey books. I really want to read A Long Way Home from a Small Angry Planet, but this is quite a large book. I think it's like a 15 hour audio and it's like a four or five book series. I've heard really amazing things about this and won a Hugo Award. She also has another book that I plan on reading for Hikathon and this one was kind of a letdown for me unfortunately. It was very slow and boring for how short it was. So in this one we are following the three science Scientists. They're on a certain planet and they're like studying it and supposed to be researching it and bringing information back to Earth. And then there's this one character that's not actually a scientist, but she's there just kind of like a helper. So anybody that needs help, she's like the hands that they have, but she's also still really smart. And they're basically just studying this planet. You're kind of getting to know the characters, but because it was a novella, you didn't get to know the characters as much as I would have liked. The writing was really, really good. Like, it was beautifully done, but it was one of those books where nothing really happens and it's kind of just more of a metaphor for different aspects of life and so there was a point in here where something happened and I was like oh we get a little bit of a plot and then like nothing really came of it and then the ending was kind of a letdown it was just kind of like a big nothing story this has such a high rating on Goodreads and I don't know if it's because people that really love Becky Chambers have read this like if I shouldn't have started with this one but I did hear that this is very different than the novella I'm still interested in trying it but unfortunately I only gave this one three stars because I was really bored through like the first half it was only a five hour audio, which I listened to it at 2.25, so it only took me like around two hours to finish. Usually I'm not bored in novellas because they're so short, but this one I just found kind of dull. There were some parts that were interesting, but unfortunately I just didn't fully love that one. Anyway, so then I started Unearthed on audio. This is by Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner. It's been on my space bookshelf for so long. So Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff write two of my favorite space galaxy type series, The Illuminae Files and Aurora Rising. Absolutely phenomenal, especially on audio. And then Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner write the These Broken Stars trilogy, another great space trilogy. And then Megan Spooner also writes some really good retellings that I love. So I already know that they're like a powerhouse author team for me, both separate and together. So I was like, why don't we just get this one done? And I knew that Amy Kaufman's book Books always have fabulous narrators, always. So this one has dual narrators. We've got Steve Weston here who is just phenomenal. And in this 
one we have Earth intercepting a message from a long extinct alien race and it seems like the solution humanity has been waiting for. The Undying's advanced technology has the potential to undo environmental damage and turn lives around and their message leads to the planet Gaia, a treasure trove waiting to be explored. So we have kind of like a spacey treasure hunt in here. There's also a blossoming romance. This is YA so it's going to be very like mild and clean. Amy Kaufman and Megan Spooner write really good like snarky fun bantery romance. It's really like funny and quirky so I'm really really enjoying it. A couple hours into this one I'm going to try to get it done tomorrow but it might kind of linger a little bit because this one's a longer audio. It's one that I've been wanting to start for a while so that is my current audiobook status. I have not fully decided my physical book yet. I'm getting ready to take a bath and then I'm going to go head to bed and read in bed so I'll figure out which book I'm going to read. I might read a couple chapters of different things. I'll let you know what I pick tomorrow. But I have some packages in the mail so I thought I would open them with you since today's vlog was a little lackluster. So I got my Ipsy just a makeup subscription that I have gotten for a while. This is kind of pretty. I skip a lot of the months, but it's worth it just to kind of get the mascara and things. Ooh, this is a gel eyeliner. It's in a purple casing. If this is a purple eyeliner, I will love it. That would be amazing, especially for the readathon. Ooh, get gripping. <laughs> Makeup setting spray. Curl Charisma hair cream. I do have wavy hair. I don't have curly hair, but we'll try that. A brightening face wash. My skin is really sensitive right now, so we'll have to see how that goes. And then soothing repair toning serum. So it tightens pores. Just a little fun kit. And then I got some books from Pango. Made my first Pango purchase a couple weeks ago because I have a surprise themed reading vlog coming out in a couple weeks probably. I might be obsessed with ordering from Pango now. It's kind of like my Facebook groups meets eBay so it's nicer than eBay and book focused but also it's like protected by Pango so your outcomes are a little bit better and they list a lot of pictures and things and you can find really good deals for books on there. So I got Throne Breakers. This is the sequel to Crown Chasers which I want to get to for the readathon so I thought I'd get the sequel in case. I think this one was like four dollars. All the books on there are individual sellers so what I'll do is I'll click on their shop and see if there's any other books I want because then the shipping will be lower than just buying from a bunch of individual ones. So I also got a faux love story. This is a clue for the theme for randomathon round two which starts April 8th. The announcement video may be out already it's coming out midway into galaxy a so sometime during the second week. But if it's not, this is your little clue. So you can take a little guess. Uh, I got Alone Out Here, another spacey read by Riley Redgate. This is another YA read. It just looks really good and I loved the cover. And then I got Tenth Girl because I've been eyeing this one for a while. I'm probably going to read this closer to spooky season because there's a haunted Argentinian mansion, a family curse with a twist you'll never see coming. Welcome to Fakara School. So it's like dark academia haunted mansion. And I've been eyeing this. It looks amazing and the cover's stunning. Yay, so that was fun. I have a lot of things planned for this week, so we'll go over them tomorrow because I'm going to do some things. First thing in the morning, we're actually going to leave the house. Usually I stay here and like edit and clean, but we're actually going to head out and do something fun tomorrow. But I will check back in tomorrow once I figured out what I'm physically reading and what we're doing, and yeah, good first day of the readathon so far. Hey guys, happy Galaxyathon day two. A bit of a morning. It's now 12 30 p.m. on Tuesday. I thought I was gonna start this day off totally differently so Jeff wound up leaving for work like crazy early at like 5 30 and it kind of woke me up a little bit and I decided to get up at 5 50 and I was literally in my head I was like wow I'm up so early I'm gonna like read and then I'm gonna do yoga and then I'm gonna get like all of this stuff done and then I sat on the couch to read and I completely fell asleep like knocked out fell asleep and I did not get up until nine o'clock so so hopefully that doesn't mess up my sleep schedule tonight. This time change is messing me up a little bit. I didn't think it was going to, but it is messing me up just a tad. <laughs> kind of behind today from getting up so late. So my plans changed. I was going to go do something else, but we'll talk about that tomorrow because I think I'm going to do it tomorrow. Last night I have a big stack of books next to my bed that I cannot get the audiobooks for. So those are the ones I wanted to choose to physically read. And I was going to read like a chapter of each book and see which one I wanted to read. But then I read a chapter of How I Stole Johnny Depp's Alien Girlfriend. And it was just so 
funny and fun and fast paced that I decided just to go with it. So this was my novella choice for the readathon, and I absolutely loved it. I finished it this morning. It's 170 pages, so slightly longer than the novella category, but that's okay. I read half of this last night, and then I finished it this morning, and I just had the best time. So this is definitely YA, slightly younger YA, very quirky and silly. We've got Hitchhiker's Guide, Space Opera, The Prom Goer's Interstellar Guide kind of vibes about it. So if you like those kind of quirky, silly, fun books, this is such a good one. Our main character is like 14 or 15. He's definitely like a 14, 15 year old guy. But it was just really, really funny and really adventurous. So in this one, we're following David and his dad is like a psychologist and he kind of rehabilitates people and he gets this girl named Zelda who thinks that she is an alien and he's kind of trying to rehabilitate her and David winds up falling in love with her and like thinking that she's crazy and getting drug into this whole storyline that she has and, and she is like brutal and mean to him but also still intriguing and super pretty. I just had a really great time. It was so fun. So I gave this one four stars. It's just really a very cool book too. This is the quickest I have read a book in a long time. I have been very slowly physically reading but there's like a lot of dialogue and stuff so it was just really easy to get through. So four stars. Really really enjoyed it. I'm glad because my first novella did not go so good. Now I get to pick a different physical book later today. I'll probably pick a physical and a graphic novel. I have not jumped into my audiobook yet because I filmed the announcement for Randomathon today. That should be up or almost up here pretty soon by the time you're seeing this and I get everything all edited. Super, super excited for the new theme. I'm trying to stay focused though because it's crammed in a little bit in between Galaxyathon and Hikeathon where I have to like prep certain things. So I'm trying to like mostly stay focused on Galaxyathon while also kind of pre planning some things for Randomathon because I need to do some pictures and things like that. Today, I really need to clean my house. It is kind of a mess. I did a lot on Sunday, but the office is back to being as bad as it was that you saw during the Randomathon on vlog so I need to work on that and really decide like if I'm getting new shelves or doing like a huge unhaul again and then I'm gonna try and edit like half an hour to an hour today either this vlog or the randomathon announcement I'm gonna try to edit every day because I'm trying to get kind of caught up with everything I need to walk ledge slash exercise myself and then we might do an excursion later because there are some galaxy food things that I want to get at world market and there's some stuff I need to return and things so we might do that today because Jeff is working late tonight so I have a a lot of time because he won't be here and we won't be like watching movies together or anything. So I might do that later. Depends on how much energy I have. We'll see how everything goes. For now, I'm going to clean for a solid hour, listen to my audiobook, and then I'm going to stop and edit and then we'll make a decision about what we're going to do and what book we're going to start next. So that is my loose plan for right now and I will see you guys soon. Little garden tour. It's an absolute disaster out here. I do have some flowers popping up that I planted, some bulbs this spring. I gotta clear all of this out, replant some things. I did this bed, their strawberries are done. We have a couple popping up. Look at this cabbage. So this is a mess, but I planted these, I think during like not so scary a thon, not doing good, but I got one pretty one. I'm very excited. We got some onions. I got two more blackberry bushes because this one, while it doesn't look good now, will bounce back. And it, after like two years, has given me so many blackberries. And it stays here in the container, no thorns, fabulous. So I got a couple more, I need to plant the other one. My herbs are kind of cleaned up, waiting for them to pop up. Sage is getting ready to bloom. Some random nasturtiums over here, already blooming, which is crazy because it has not been warm. And usually they don't bloom until it's super warm. More daffodils right here. Loving those. This is a geranium that's looking really good. It's very pretty when it blooms. And then behind the shed over here, all of our wood for making little fire pits, but we have nasturtiums blooming. They were wild last year. I think I vlogged about it in a couple vlogs, but we haven't tamed this area and I'm just letting them go because I love the flowers and then you can actually eat the seeds. They're kind of like capers. But it's cool, we've got these smaller ones and then some bigger ones back there. This is gonna be so pretty. And see like these over here are blooming already, which is crazy. Okay, checking back in. It is now four o'clock. I did a couple hours of cleaning and working and then I edited my randomathon announcement for a little bit and 
while I was cleaning and stuff, I listened to my audiobook. So I think I have seven hours left. This was like a 12 or 13 hour audiobook, which I normally try to stick with 10 because that will take me around five hours. And I can usually do like three to four hours a day at least while I'm working and doing other things. So I'm hoping I can get this done today, but I don't know. I might have a little bit left over tomorrow, but that's okay because I finished my physical read quicker than I expected. I am really enjoying it. The characters are just so snarky and fun. They keep talking about the undying, which is like an alien race <laughs> that is in this book. And I need to ask my friend because I think the undying was also in Aurora Rising, which would mean these kind of connect a little bit, which would be very cool. Um, I'm not seeing anything in here from Illuminate. That's just reminding me of Aurora Rising and it could be that Steve West is the narrator and so everything he says <laughs> it's just fabulous. But he was also the narrator for Aurora Rising, so I could just be mixing them. Anyway, I'm really enjoying it. I'm glad that I'm finally getting to it. I don't think I'll do the second book during the readathon, but I'll do it shortly after. Okay, so I was gonna go like run some errands. I have a bunch of things to like return to Amazon and TJ Maxx and pick up and stuff like that, but I'm running out of steam and I'm worried that I'm gonna get hungry like while I'm running errands. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to take a ledge for a walk. I'm gonna hop over to Sprouts, which is only like five minutes from my house. Grab a couple things because I want to get some spirulina kombucha because I do that for every readathon. I get this like blue kombucha and I make it sparkly and galaxy s. I want to get some purple potatoes so that I can make like a purple galaxy salad and also just some purple mashed potatoes something I like to do every year. I think I'm not gonna go anywhere today, unfortunately, because I think I'm gonna do quite a bit tomorrow. I'm gonna go to the plant store tomorrow and take you with me, and I think World Market to get some spacey type snacks. So I think I'm gonna stay here, but I am gonna go take Ledge for a walk, continue to listen to my audiobook, make myself some food for dinner. It cracks me up because people always talk about girl dinner, like when they were single or when their husbands aren't home, they'll just eat like crackers and a piece of cheese, and I'm like, no like girl dinner for me is like a regular dinner <laughs> like I don't mind scavenging and I love leftovers but I'm not gonna eat like three crackers and a piece of cheese for dinner absolutely not we're gonna have a gyro salad tonight I'm gonna make some lemon potatoes that way we'll have leftovers it's gonna be a whole vibe not spacey yet I'm sorry I don't have a lot of fun like spacey footage for you guys I am wearing a Tomorrowland sweater really cute that I got at Disney and I am drinking blue butterfly tea I don't know if you can see it in here I'll show you guys later that I make every year out of my little astronaut shuttle space mug that I got at Air and Space Museum last year. I am not entirely sure what spacey activities we are doing for this readathon yet because I want to do at least one or two. Uh, last year we went to the Air and Space Museum and a space speakeasy. There's a different space speakeasy that I think we're gonna go to. There's also a different like planetarium. You're just gonna be along for the ride. So everything's going good. I'm actually in a very good mood for the kind of sleep that I got. Usually when I wake up that much and then like fall back asleep, I feel like groggy and terrible all day, but I actually feel pretty good. So maybe I just needed the extra hours of sleep because I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I have really bad allergies right now, but today we're feeling groovy and I feel like I've accomplished quite a bit. Clean the entire kitchen and the living room. I ordered some stuff from Home Depot. I've got half of Randomathon edited, so yay. Going good so far. So I think I'm just gonna go take Ledge for a walk, continue listening to my audiobook, and if I have anything else going on, I will update you. Tonight, I am gonna catch up on The Bachelor. I can't watch it live anymore because I don't have YouTube TV anymore now that football season is over, so I have to watch it on Hulu, so I do wanna watch that. Tonight, it's gonna cut into my reading time a little bit but we're doing really good so far. I don't think I'll have anything else to say, so I think I will just see you guys tomorrow. morning guys happy galaxy a -thon day three all right we're feeling a little bit reset I actually was able to fall asleep right around 10 o'clock last night almost earlier than I normally do which I'm really thankful for because I was worried because I got that extra sleep time that it would make me less tired but I did a lot of things yesterday and I felt really good 
the whole day. Usually when I fully wake up and then fall asleep again, it makes me feel groggy and I felt really good the whole day, like better than I felt in a while. So I'm really thankful for that. I got up around 7.45 today, a little bit back to normal, had my breakfast, did some regular work, did some editing, posted on Instagram, all that stuff. Couple reading updates. Last night, I almost finished Unearthed. I think I literally have 30 minutes left. I was listening on my headphones and I just didn't want to be in my headphones like anymore because it was like 10 p.m. and I usually don't listen to audiobooks that late and I wanted to physically read so I decided just to finish it today so we're finishing this today I am so enjoying it it's really really good I need to make like a video or a reel like ranking all of my Amy Kaufman books Ugh, they're so good really really enjoying this one and then I physically read Supermoon by H.A. Swain now H.A. Swain wrote a book called Hungry which is a YA dystopian standalone that I really enjoy it's kind of ridiculous and over the top perfect for the next readathon because it's in a world where we don't have food like we just take like pills or like little energy packets or something and there's no real food and then the main character starts to be curious and discover things about food it's a little bit silly but not at the same time like I really enjoyed that one I kept meaning to read something else from her and so I've had this one for a while I read a bunch of chapters of other books I got 30 pages in which I felt like was pretty good because I did this at like 10 30 at night and I was so tired so we're doing pretty good with our physically reading and in this one we have Uma's family have immigrated to the moon utilitarian survival colony and she's dreamed of going back to earth but not as a stowaway passing as an earthling is easy for this budding scientist but if Uma doesn't return to Musk soon her mother will be forced back to the grueling life that they escaped in the wastelands of earth I haven't gotten to the stowaway part yet but I am enjoying it so far and this is a standalone thank goodness I'm gonna start another audiobook today and hopefully get a big chunk of that done as well but we have a little bit of an adventure plan that we're going to go on together. So I'm going to go up to Orange County, which is like a 45 minute drive from me. And I'm going to go to my favorite plant store because not only is it my favorite plant store and it is absolutely stunning and beautiful. It also has like a wide variety of plants and really good pricing on them. Like they're a tiny bit more expensive than some other places, but the varieties are more rare and thing. And overall, I just like supporting them. I need to get some flowers and some lettuce and some tomatoes to plant in the garden because it's full on planting mode. I'm a little tiny bit behind, but if I get a couple of plant starts, then I'll be kind of caught up. So we need to do that. And I figured while we're up there, we will hit up a couple of the library used bookstores. I'm going to check out the outlet mall that's really close to there because I am looking for some more like themed shirts for randomathon. I'm having a really hard time finding shirts with food on them. It sounds silly, but I'm wanting things with like even just like lemons and pineapples. And I feel like that not that difficult to find. So we're going to go couple stores up there I think that might have them. I gotta go to TJ Maxx and return something. Just a bunch of like different shopping and things like that. So we're gonna go do that today while we listen to some audiobooks. I'll take you with me. We'll probably grab some lunch while we're up there and then we'll head home.
adventuring, I bought a lot more things than I was planning on. I got a ton of plants at the plant store that I'll probably show you tomorrow because I'm too lazy to take you out there right now. And then I went to the library bookstore, show you those in a second. I went to Home Goods and TJ Maxx because I had to return some things and I got a couple things there. And then I went to Sprouts and I got my purple potatoes and my blue spirulina kombucha so that we are good to go. So at Home Goods, I got this little strawberry mug. <sighs> I know, we don't need another mug. I don't think I actually have many, if any, mugs with like food on them, which will be for the next readathon. And then to match, I got this strawberry candle and it's Martha Stewart and it smells like strawberries for the readathon and also spring. They also have a strawberry stool that's kind of like a viral stool that's been going around on like TikTok and Instagram and I really want it. So I might have Jeff get it for me for my birthdays to put like outside somewhere because it's so cute. Also in the mail, part of my target order came in and I got the Star Wars cookbook. I have been using this from the library for like two years now. And when I rented it last time, Jeff was like, are you gonna just buy that or? <laughs> so I went ahead and bought it because the food at Star Wars in Disney is so good. I wanna make some of the stuff in here. There's some really, really fun stuff that I'm gonna make with you guys sometime this week or this weekend or next week. Excited. I was actually gonna go to Disneyland tomorrow with my mom and my sister. We had it planned and then we have like an extreme wind advisory like it said 40 mile hour winds up to a hundred or something and after my experience with Joshua Tree that we went to two weekends ago we went to Joshua Tree. It was so crazy windy. Hoodie strings were like slapping us in the face and we were getting sandblasted from the dirt in Joshua Tree and our car was shaking and I was like I am not up for a windy time and it's literally only supposed to happen tomorrow because there's like a storm coming in. So we just shifted to next week. So I'll take you to Disney with me next week. Okay now I'm going to show you the books that I got and then we'll show you all the fun food that I found at World Market because they had like a whole galaxy like astronaut section because the universe is working with me and they like to give me all of the themes so we'll show you that in a second. I got some books for future giveaways and things but the main things I got for myself I got Wanderlust by Jen Malone and this just give me like hike-a-thon adventure nature vibes and it's like a romance. I got A Peculiar Peril. This is a huge book and this one is Jonathan Lamb's head is set to inherit his deceased grandfather's overstuffed mansion, a veritable cabinet of curiosities. Once he and two schoolmates catalog its contents, but the three soon discover that the house is filled with far more than oddities. It holds clues linking to an alternate earth called Aurora, where the notorious English occultist Alistair Crowley has seized power on a magical field rampage across a looking glass version of Europe, replete with talking animals and vegetables. I mean, that sounds like a magical good time. I don't think I've heard of that one. And then I ha got the undead Truth of Us, mainly because this girl with the sunflowers was just giving me all the vibes I wanted. But this is 17 year old Zari Young is absolutely certain her mother has morphed into a zombie before her untimely death. But she can't seem to figure out why her mother's died, why her aunt doesn't want her around, or why all her dreams seem suddenly and hopelessly out of reach. And why ever since that day she's been seeing zombies everywhere. Great. I found Evil Librarian. Sounds great. It says when Cynthia Rothschild's best friend Annie falls head over heels for their new high school librarian, Sin can totally understand why. He's a really young, seriously hot, and apparently thinks Annie would make an excellent library monitor. But almost immediately, Sin starts to sense that something about Mr. Gabriel isn't quite right. Maybe it's the creepy look in the librarian's literally mesmerizing eyes or the weird feeling she gets whenever he's around or the blood and horns and the giant bat-like wings that appear when he thinks no one is looking. So I think he is like a devil or a demon and it's set in a library. It literally has like a library return card. Great. Then at World Market, we got space balls. These are essentially just Cheetos. <laughs> they are organic cheddar bites. But your Jeff would love this and I could use it for my, possibly for my photo. I got space tea. This is the world's finest mushroom tea plus lemonade. So it has some like reishi and lion's mane in it, which is 
supposed to be good for brain health. And it has a fairly low sugar content for like a soda type drink. So again, I thought Jeff might enjoy that. I might have some of it. I got a lollipop to add to the giveaway. It's like a rocket. I got two alien candies. These are green apple flavor, mainly because I want this little tin for <laughs> pictures and things. Um, but I got one to put in the giveaway. And then I got some freeze dried space peaches. So I have this and I have an ice cream sandwich that I got last year as well. So we'll try most of this on camera, but that was really fun. They had an entire section of space and galaxy themed food, which was just exactly what I needed and wanted. Okay, so then I finished Unearthed on the car. The ending was very good and it leaves off on a cliffhanger and I really, really, really enjoyed this one. So definitely a solid four star. I'll be reading the next book in the duology probably after Galaxy a thon, like before the next readathon. Then I started the Lux series. Their first book I think is Origins. So this is Opposition, which is book two. I hate these covers with an absolutely vicious passion, but they're coming out with new special editions. So if I wind up loving it, I might get the special editions because they're so much better. Basically it's a YA romance and I believe there are human-like aliens and it's set on earth for the most part, for what I know. So far, the narrator is Justine Eyre. She is one of my favorites and she's the reason that I picked this book next also because I've been meaning to get to it for so long. I did not like two of Jennifer L. Armentrout's other books. One was Wicked, which was New Adult. I just didn't really like it. I have a lot of friends that do though. And then the other one was like a thriller called Don't Look Back and I didn't like that one, but they're all like so far very different. I've had a lot of friends tell me that I will enjoy this one. This is definitely like old school YA. We've got like a super snarky obnoxious love interest like almost too much so we'll have to see how it goes but the narrator does such a good job because the language and stuff in here is very high schooly but she is not trying to sound like she's in high school she's just reading it and so the characters are like much more like enjoyable and lovable and the main character likes to garden a lot she's moved to this new state with her mom because her dad died and they kind of want to have a fresh start and her new neighbors have some interesting personality traits yeah I'm really liking it so far and I think it's one that I'm going to go through pretty fast. It is late. I'm not checking in with you for a little bit because it's five o'clock now and I need to get started on dinner and then I'm going to watch the Love is Blind reunion. It should only be like an hour hopefully because I don't want to get spoiled with anything on the internet because there's kind of like a lot of drama happening around it but I am going to listen to this while I'm cooking and then hopefully after I watch the reunion or we might watch a movie or something. But that's my check-in for today. I have a lot more reading time tomorrow now that we're not going to Disney, so I'm not as bummed that I haven't gotten very far into this. So yeah, so far a really good day. I got an amazing sandwich at this new Italian like bakery deli place that I am obsessed with and I had a really fun time. So that's my update and I'll see you guys soon. Okay. So I'm out here gardening while I listen to my audio. These are the plants that I got yesterday. Two packs of lettuce. I got a pack of cucumbers, even though I recommend starting cucumbers by seed because they come up like this in four or five days. This was really cheap and there had so many in it and I'm feeling kind of lazy, so I, <laughs> I got them anyway. I got a pack of early girl tomatoes, six pack, and there's, and like this one has like three tomatoes, so I need to separate those. Then I got a bunch of other more like rare tomatoes, one of them being Brad's Atomic Grape, which I thought was perfect for the readathon. I've had it before, it's good. I got some onions and then I got a pink sky petunia that I'm gonna put in a planter galaxy flower. So I'm gonna get to planting. Happy Galaxyathon day five. I'm sorry I did not check in with you face to face yesterday. I was just doing a lot of things and I just didn't have the time to like check in other than just my little gardening check in, but we're here today. So I have a bunch of reading updates. So yesterday I finished Obsidian. I can't find my copy. I'm not sure where it went. I like this one a lot more than the other JLA books that I have read. It definitely has an old school, very YA 
vibe about it. Think Twilight, but with aliens. It is extremely angsty. Our main character reminded me a lot of Noah from the Mara Dyer series. There's also another character like this in the Alice in Zombieland series. He's like the love interest that's secretly an alien, and he is very rude and very snarky, almost too much. I like a snarky character that is more teasing rather than just flat out rude, unless there's like a reason for it. So it got a little bit old, especially towards the end where the main character and him have developed a relationship and he's still being pretty rude and snarky. I did enjoy this. I felt like it was way too long. It had a lot to do with high school stuff, which I don't always love. I didn't mind it so much, but they're like going to dances and different things and it's all set on earth and you don't really get a lot of the actual like sci-fi plot until the end. So I kind of have mixed feelings. I really like the main character. She likes to garden a lot, which was really fun. So she talks about that and I really liked the sister of the love interest. I think she was was my favorite character. She was just really charming and well written. So I overall I had a good time. I think it's going to be like a 3.5 for me. I will probably read the next book and see how I feel at some point. So this is going to go on my unfinished series list. So oh and there is a small spicy scene towards the end. It's very minimal and mild. So if you're wanting normal JLA stuff it's not really in here at all because this is a YA book. So that's fine. Okay then last night Jeff and I had a cozy little galaxy good time. We put on a space ambiance in the bedroom, a spaceship. I found a couple really cool new ones that I will link down below. I think I've linked them on Instagram already. I put my little astronaut projector on and we just like hung out in bed and read some books. I did not read any more in my regular physical book unfortunately but I did start The Little Prince. I got halfway through that which is just like a kid's book that I have never read before. And then I started Descender by Jeff Lemire which is my first graphic novel. This one I got from the library and I did not realize that it was Spanish. <laughs> And I was really liking the art so I decided to just read it on my little tablet that Jeff gave me. He gave me like his old tablet when he got a new one. I got it from the library and I read it there and I have discovered now, we've had two new discoveries for this readathon, that I think I like reading graphic novels on an e-reader more than physically, which is the opposite of how I feel about physically reading. One, because the graphics like really stand out. Two, there are some pages in here where the wording and stuff is just crazy small and I could like zoom in on that section and I liked having to just tap to go to the next page rather than like flip the page because sometimes there's only like three words on a page and I don't know seems like a lot of work. So I think I'm going to read all my graphic novels that way which will really open up the amount that I can get and how quickly I really liked this and the ending of it and I just went and got the second one and I read that one last night too. So now I'm just going to binge this whole series because I'm really invested. So we're in the future in space. There are these character robot thingies called Tim and they are created to be companions for families and kind of become like family and have emotions and stuff and there's this one particular one that we're following he wakes up and he's on this like spaceship area alone and he can't find his family and so you're following him as he's trying to find his family. It's been 10 years since he has woken up so something bad happened and you're kind of following him on the journey and then you're learning about the whole world. There's different galaxies. There's different like kingdoms and things and it is really really good. Really enjoying that. Like a lot. Like has the potential to be a new favorite. I'm not sure how many issues are out. Today I am going to head over to my mom's house and we're gonna hang out. Since we didn't have our Disney day I got a little bit more ahead of some things. I got some work that I need to do while I'm over there. I can do some things online and stuff but we are going to continue watching Traders UK that we started on Monday. It's also my mom's birthday in a couple of days so I thought it would be fun to just go hang out with her. So I'm going to go watch Traders UK with them. But today, a new thing that I'm going to start doing for the readathons, I had like 30 audiobooks checked out from the library through Libby and Hoopla. And I like having that because if my moods change or if I don't like the narrator or if I'm DNFing or whatever, I have plenty of options to choose from. Or if I see like other people in the readathon reading a book and loving it, then I can pick that one up. So I always check out like 30 to 50 books. And what I decided to do is just to go and like listen and see what, which ones kind of captured my attention, almost like a try a chapter, but via audiobook. And there were two that really started off really good within like the first three minutes. One was We Are the Ants, which 
I really want to read and it started off really good. I'm a little bit worried it's going to be depressing and I believe it is also set on earth. It's going to be kind of more contemplative about humanity and life which is good but I wanted something a little bit more spacey since the Lux series was mostly set on earth. I didn't get like that spaceship galaxy vibe that I wanted. So we're definitely going to read We Are the Ants at some point during the readathon but other one that caught my attention shockingly was The Diabolic by S.J. Kincaid. I have several of her books that I have not read yet and this one has a royalty aspect to it so in this world we have these robot companions kind of like in Descender called the Diabolics and they are made to basically protect and watch over one particular human. They're ruthless, powerful, and they will kill anyone that is going to harm that particular human and we have Nemesis and she is with Sidonia, the heir to the Galactic Senate but when a power-mad emperor summons Sidonia to the Imperial Court as a hostage there's only one one way for a nemesis to protect Sidonia, she must become her. Also, I believe the Diabolics are now illegal in this world, so they're kind of hiding the fact that she is a Diabolic. So we've got a little bit of like an AI robot situation, but we're in like this galactic empire, and I am loving it. The audiobook narrator, I'll put her here, I don't remember her name, so good and the storytelling is like so engaging it has like a fantasy element but we're still like in space with the galactic vibes and the ai robot and i'm just so invested this one's young adult as well so we're gonna listen to the audiobook i got a little bit into this i'm gonna listen to it on my drive because it's like 40 minutes to my mom i definitely won't finish that today because it's like a 12 hour audio so i'm gonna start doing this more because the more invested i am in the narrator and the writing style the quicker i'm gonna get through them and the more i will like look forward to just jumping back in. Not that I ever really make myself read books I don't like, but sometimes like with the Lux, there was a point yesterday where it kind of drug in the middle and I was outside gardening and I was like, maybe I'll switch to something else and come back to this. And I was like, no, no, no. I only have an hour and a half left. I'll just finish it. And I'm glad I did because I enjoyed it, but it just really helps when you have like an amazing narrator. And that, that book does have a good narrator. It just kind of drug a little bit. Anyway, enough rambling. I'm going to head over to my mom's house and I will see you guys when I get back. There is a shield. Whoever finds it and manages to bank it will be protected from tonight's murder. Hey guys, I'm back. Not much has changed for you except I French braided my hair. It's now 7 p.m. I was gone for quite a while. We watched several episodes of Traders and we just had a really good time. We're really liking the UK season. The first season's better so far. Enjoying season two. I did not get to listen to much more of Diabolic. I did about half an hour on the car ride there and then I listened to a podcast on the way home. I think I am going to jump into this tonight though, maybe clean just a tiny bit, which doesn't sound super fun after being gone like all day, but I want to listen to a little bit more tonight because I only got like an hour and a half into it and I'm really really enjoying it and then I'm going to read another graphic novel and hopefully a little bit more of my book. Jeff's still not home so I'm gonna kind of clean until he gets here and then tomorrow we're gonna go to breakfast for my mom's birthday. We shouldn't be gone all day I'm hoping that we'll be home by like two or three and then I can do like a garden binge session where I garden and listen to my audiobook and get a big chunk done. Not a lot of filming today sorry about that. I have a quick little story time and hopefully this ends triumphantly. So I was in a bookstore a couple years ago and I saw an edition of Across the Universe, one of my favorite sci-fi trilogies ever. It's incredible, especially this first book. And it was an edition that had the spaceship in this book as a dust jacket. And I didn't get it because I wasn't buying like special editions or multiple books. And I've still kind of kicked myself for not getting it because it was only five dollars and it would look so cool for photos and it was just really really neat. And so I was trying to find it online and then someone said the regular book the reverse dust jacket is the spaceship so we're gonna see and i hope that they are correct <gasps> oh my gosh i was hoping this would happen this is so exciting <gasps> so it has a reverse dust jacket like a full thing that is the spaceship and everything that is very cool and you know what i think i have an extra copy of this book that i was going to use for the giveaway but i might just steal it and reverse it so that i have two copies because this is so cool that i want to switch it but i also really love this cover that is neat so if you have this book the regular edition has that element actually i'm gonna check the second and third one too i don't think that they do but let's check them real quick okay this is million sons it does not and then be shocked if this one did. They changed the covers on us and I like this cover but it doesn't match. It's really upsetting and it doesn't either. Okay so just the first one but still that is super cool. I might have to take a photo of that with that this week 
Okay, bye. Good morning, happy Galaxy a thon day six. It is 9 a.m. on Saturday morning. Jeff and I are getting ready to head out the door to go to brunch, breakfast for my mom's birthday which is Monday, but we're all getting together today. We're gonna to be by the beach. I've got a store that I wanna to go to that may have some like galaxy themed shirts. They did at one point, and I think we may have to go to the grocery store and stuff today as well, but I got really far into the Diabolic, basically halfway last night. I just continued to listen to it. Literally, I was listening to it until I fell asleep, which I don't normally do with audiobooks. I am really, really enjoying it. I do think that the narrator is increasing my experience probably by like 20 or 30 percent. I could see other people feeling like this is a little bit on the slow side because you're in the mind of the Diabolic for the majority of it, but there is a lot of things happening, and it talks a lot about the galactic empire and the politics and I don't want that to make it seem like it sounds complicated because it's not. It's written very much like a regular fantasy. I would say it leans more fantasy than it does spacey but it does have those sci-fi elements because we have the diabolic and we have some other type of AI robot -y type creatures. Something major just happened and I'm really liking it and last night when I was adding this to my Goodreads I realized that it has a 4.1 out of 26,000 ratings on Goodreads. That is incredibly high, especially for that many ratings. Like that is crazy. I don't know why I'm not seeing more people talk about it because it seems to be very well beloved. So I'm really invested and really, really liking this like a ton. So I have seven hours left. So that'll take me about three to four hours to finish. So I think I can get this done today when we come home, which is great. And then I can do a short novella tomorrow and get two books in for the weekend. Uh, this will also work for an upcoming hikeathon prompt. So keep this one in mind. Okay, I didn't physically read anything because I just listened to my audiobook, but I am going to bring my graphic novel and my physical book in the car while we're driving around for a little bit. And yeah, I'll just take you with me and film what we're doing and have a good day. It is now 7.30 p.m. on Saturday. I look a little crazy because I <laughs> put my hair up to take my bath. You may see me in this sweater again in a day or two because I only wore it for like an hour, but it has facey stuff on it from Stitch. I have not read anything today. Jeff and I were kind of in and out all day. We had brunch. We did a little shopping with my mom. We had to go to Costco. We came back. We walked ledge and then we went to Cosmos Burgers because I wanted to go there for galaxy -a -thon. It didn't really have anything like spacey on the menu. It did have an astronaut on the wall and it was in the name and it was really good. So that was fun. I got a little picture for tomorrow's photo challenge, even though I'm gonna have more spacey food in the days coming up. Not eating the best foods this weekend. Definitely need some more salads and things starting next week. I did get some books from the library bookstores, so I'll show you those. Okay, so we went to two library bookstores today, actually. So I found Froy of the Exiles by Marina Marchetta. This is the next library one, but this is part of the Finnegan of the Rock trilogy or series. It's a fantasy series. I don't know anything about it, except I have a couple friends that said that they love it, and I don't have this book yet. I got War Girls, again, ex-library. I may have hauled this already for my Galaxy of On Haul, but if I did, then this will just go in the giveaway. This is a little bit spacey. It's kind of apocalyptic, and I think it has a little bit of space stuff. I got 
cruelty. Again, another sci-fi has like assassins and spies and like a cool network. Mila 2.0 Renegade, which this is part of a robot series. And I think I have them all now. And I really want to do a robot theme for one of the randomathons. It'll probably be a while before I do it, but I thought like a robot slash AI would be kind of fun. And then I got Egg and Spoon, which I already own, but this is going to be for the next randomathon giveaway. This is a clue for the theme that you will see in a couple days or that you may already know. So yay. It's 7.30. I feel a little rejuvenated now that we're home and I've had my bath. Jeff is going to make me a spacey mocktail with some like blue spirulina and sparkling water and egg white and stuff. So I'll show you that in a second. We did go and get tea at the Parakeet Cafe, which they have ones open in other cities, but they just opened one in Carlsbad. That's not too far from me. And they have this blue mint drink that is peppermint tea, blue spirulina, butterfly pea tea. I got almond milk today, honey and like not a lot of honey, very little sweetener. So it was like mostly healthy and it was like so refreshing and good and blue for Galaxy Thon. All the purple blue things remind me of space. <laughs> so anyway, I'm going to clean for like 30 minutes and listen to some of the diabolic get some more into this. I was hoping to finish it today, but when we got home, I just did not have the energy to garden like I wanted. So hopefully I can do that tomorrow. We're definitely going to finish this this weekend. So I'm going to go and listen to some of that. Jeff is playing a spacey video game. I'm going to try and physically read also. So petering off just a little bit, but that's okay. We're doing good overall still. Okay. That's it for now. <laughs> Happy Galaxy-a-thon day seven and the final day of week one. It is 2 p.m. on Sunday. Jeff and my brother went up to his shop to go do some work on one of our cars that we're gonna try and fix and sell. I don't know if I ever mentioned that both Jeff and my brother are mechanics. So they're having like a little boys <laughs> fix a day. I went and had breakfast with a friend and we talked about books for like two and a half, three hours, which was really, really fun. She's so sweet. She does the readathon and she helps me sometimes with them as well. And then before I headed home, I stopped at a used bookstore that is like a normal used bookstore. So 90% of the bookstores and used bookstores I go to are library bookstores that are connected to the libraries where books are donated and they sell them for like one to three dollars. So I get really good deals on books and I don't normally go to actual used bookstores because the the books are more expensive, especially this particular one. All of the books are half price of the cover, no matter what book it is. So it could be like X library, have no cover or have a rip in the cover. And it's still half price. So most hardbacks are like $10, which is cheaper than new. But for me, when I'm able to get them cheaper other places, that's not that great of a deal. However, they do have a buyback program. And I had a bag of X library books that I wanted to take them to see if they would take them because my other used bookstore won't. And they took them all and they gave me $2 credit for all of them. I have $30 credit, <laughs> book math here. You can use half of your credit towards your total. So if your total is $30, I could use $15 of my credit and then the books would be $15. That makes them more affordable. So for me, that makes it a better deal and I think I'm gonna do that more often. A lot of their books are kind of beat up, but I did get some really good ones. So first up, I found Full Tilt in paperback. I don't think this ever had a hardback. This is by Neil Shesterman. I read this during Randomathon and it was one of my favorite reads. I talk about it a lot there and in my reading wrap up and I tried to find a copy of this like on Pango and eBay and I could only find the mass market paperback, but this is a normal paperback. So I'm really excited that I found this one. Then I got As the Shadow Rise, 
Rises by Katie Rose Poole. This is part of the There Will Come a Darkness duology or trilogy and it's like I think magicians? Magic? Just it sounds good. I got Lark Ascending and Shadow Lark. This is part of the Skylark trilogy which I have the first book by Megan Spooner who is one of the authors of Unearthed. She does a lot of retellings. I think this one is more dystopian than it is spacey but either way it's Megan Spooner and these are a little bit harder to find. I think they might be like her first series so I was really excited. And then I found Straight On Till Morning by KJ Sutton which is a Peter Pan retelling not to be confused with the Liz Braswell one that's a Disney one. I believe this is an indie book. This might be a smutty book but I know that I've heard about it and I figured we're gonna try it out. It's really pretty looking. So I got those. So now I'm home. Ledge has been by himself a lot over the weekend so I'm gonna spend some time with him and then I'm gonna make the boys dinner <laughs> once they're on the way home but I'm gonna go outside and garden. I have 30 minutes left of the Diabolic. I listened to this while I was driving around and it's getting crazy. Like the ending I was like <gasps> in the car. I kind of gasped a little bit because there were like two twists that I did not see happening. I'm obsessed. I would be shocked if anything beat this during the readathon. I don't think it's quite a five star but it's like a 4.5 and it could move to a five star depending on how the rest of the books go so I'll definitely be continuing on. I have 30 minutes left then I'm gonna listen to like half of a novella because I want to start Bad Astronauts but I don't feel like binging the whole thing today and I also need to start another book that I can use for my current read tomorrow because I have several pictures of books that I haven't read yet that I would like to use for that photo. I try really hard not to post pictures of books that I haven't read <laughs> unless it's for like a haul because I just don't like promoting things that I haven't read and don't have personal thoughts on. So I got to go through my audios and pick out another one. I'm not sure if I'm going to pick like a long one or not while I go and like garden in the backyard. So that is the plan for right now but this is really good. I don't think I mentioned this yesterday. This is pretty brutal for a YA. There's some intense deaths in here. There's some trigger warnings for a couple things. Nothing that overly bothers me. There's a lot of like politics and intense things and people dying and things. So just be prepared that this is not a light read by any means and the diabolic is definitely kind of ruthless and intense. So I would say it's more mild than like Red Rising but definitely more intense than what I expected for YA. So just know that going in. It's space food day so we're gonna make some fun space food later. I really wanted to get a boba tea because in my mind boba is kind of spacey but the place I went wasn't open and then I was too lazy to find a different one. So <laughs> that's it for now. Hey guys, I just realized I did not film an outro for this reading vlog. It's now a couple days into the second week. I wanted to come and let you know I just kind of tuckered out on Sunday and I didn't get a chance to check back in. I did do some gardening and I did start The Last Eight on Sunday night and this is a book about an apocalypse, an alien apocalypse that happens and there are basically these eight teenagers that are alive and they all get together in this Area 51 type compound and they have to figure out what to do because they haven't died and the world is basically over because the aliens have come and they're still here. So it's really interesting and it has a very strong apocalyptic vibe about it and I got I think about a third of the way through so you'll see me talk about and finish this in the second reading vlog. So, so far so good. I think I've hit almost all of the reading challenges. We'll talk about that in the second reading vlog. We've got some fun things planned for next week. I'm gonna wrap this vlog up here and stay tuned for the next one. See you guys next time on The Bright Side. Mm -hmm.